So now we're going to try to find the uh, priority list generated by the critical path algorithm again, but we're going to use a different approach. We're going to use an approach called the backflow algorithm, and the backflow algorithm uh, sort of counts backwards the distance till we're completed. And so the first thing we're going to do here is add a vertex, which we're going to call the end vertex, and we're going to note that this task, this task, and this task uh, all have to be done before we're completed. So how far is the end from the end? Why, it's 0 units from the end, and so we note that by putting a 0 inside some brackets. So backflowing now, so we're working from the end backwards, we go back and say, okay, so that means this task is 2 units from the end, this one is 7 units from the end, and this one is 4 units from the end. And then kind of like degrees of separation, we say, okay, well then how far is this from the end? Well, it's 3 units from here, this one's 7 units from the end, and so this one must be 10 units from the end. Now if we go back to here, notice there are two different directions we could go to get towards the end. We're interested in the critical path, which is the longest time. And so when we look here, we're gonna say the longer of the two routes is through task 8, and so this one, we're gonna say, has a critical time of 10 plus 4 is 14. Likewise here, we're gonna say, comparing these two routes, this is the longer route, and so this one is a distance of 15 from the end. Here, we have two routes, this one's the longer, so this has a distance of 25 from the end. Here, distance is 21. Right, 6 units here, plus the 15 here. Here, it's 3 plus the 25 is 28 units from the end. Here, we only have one route, 7 and 14 is 21. And so this, this is the backflow algorithm. We're flowing backwards from the end to figure out the critical time, the longest path from each of these tasks to the end. If we do this, then finding the critical, pa you know, finding the priority list using the critical path algorithm becomes really simple. Because if I want to know what is the head of the longest path in the, in the entire digraph, I just look at these numbers in red and say, 28, this task is the furthest from the end, and so that task needs to be the first one on my priority list. What's the next longest task from the end? Why, it's this one, which is 25 from the end. What's the next longest? Why, these two? And you'll notice that this corresponds exactly to what we did earlier with looking at what is the current critical path, what is the longest distance to the end. And so task 1 and task 3 both have the same uh, critical time, the longest time to the end. After those ones, we've got task 5 with a critical time or longest length to the end of 15, and then task 7, and task 8, and then, let's see here, then we've got task 10, and task 4, and finally task 9. And this is the same priority list we came up with, uh, before, uh, but in a much simpler way, by backflowing first, then we didn't have to go searching for critical paths, uh, we just look at those critical times that we've identified in red and list the tasks in decreasing order of that critical time, and that creates our uh, critical path algorithm-based priority list.